Welcome to a video on the Hartley Oscillator. Okay, so we will be looking at the properties and applications, the derivation using Parkinson's criteria for the design equations, some variations and improvements. Then we will do a design and lastly some simulations. So, the Hartley oscillator uses an LC tank to set the frequency. Okay, the oscillator is self starting and very high frequency generation is possible. We do not require additional nonlinear amplitude control because the LC tank has a very high Q factor and most nonlinearities will be nulled by our filtering effect. Okay, so they are self-limiting. It can be implemented using uh, VJTs or op-amps, but op-amps has frequency limitations. So be careful of using certain op-amps. And always remember that VJTs and MOSFETs has parasitic capacitances that can influence the oscillation frequency. And most of these oscillators can be tuned by just including a variable capacitance somewhere. The applications for these sinusoidal oscillators is quite broad, but typically FM transmitters, um, IF mixers in RF applications, clock generation, um, high frequency measuring equipment, the list goes on and on and on. Okay. So, the implementation, first we have our um, PJT implementation, the gain of this is minus 40 times IC RC at room temperature, we have our resonant tank back here, and note that we have a capacitor in the feedback and a capacitor at the input. And that is, we don't want any DC from our biasing network or our output to charge these inductors. So we need to block all the DC off. You will see the same with the op-amp implementation is we want to remove any DC from going into our LC tank. Okay, and it's also important to actually try and limit any DC offsets as far as possible for the Hartley. Okay, this is inverting amplifier configuration, so again it's just R2 over R1, and this R3 over here is just a parallel combination of R2 and R1, but since R1 is decoupled to the capacitor, R2 should be equal to our freeze value. Okay. So let's have a look at the Barkhausen criteria for the Hartley. From our amplifier's perspective, we have an output impedance for our amplifier and it sees an impedance in, in this direction. So Z1 parallel with a series combination of Z3 and Z2. Okay, so the parallel combination is here, and this is what our amplifier see when it's loaded. For our frequency selective network, we always try to get VF in terms of V out. Okay, so V out towards VF is just a voltage divider over this capacitor and inductor 2 and here we have it okay so again we can multiply our gain and our frequency selective network with one another and you'll see that these two terms cancel and then top and bottom we have z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 available and on the top. So we just multiply top and bottom of that. 
and we are left with a simplified equation down here. Now we can insert our inductors and capacitors and we will be left with our imaginary terms here with our unknown output impedance of our amplifier. So this L1 omega, L2 omega and 1 over C omega is going to give us our resonant frequency and the rest will determine our gain. So the resonant frequency is 1 over the root of the capacitor and the sum of the two inductors. Just add the 2 pi if you want frequency and not radians per second. And that is our oscillation frequency. Okay, so we've taken care of this phase of 0. Now we should find out where the loop gain is 1. Okay, so this is what we have left in our equation. Substituting omega 0 squared in it, we will find that inductor 1 over inductor 2 is the ratio for our gain. This is opposite from what we had for the Colpitt's oscillator, where it's C2 over C1. Okay. So again, the ratios of the resistors, of the transconductance multiplied by the collector resistor, is the choice of that is based on our inductor ratios. So, adding an RF choke will improve our output. We will have rail to rail operation, and if the uh, choke is at the same resonant frequency as our tank, we can even have output higher than our um, our rail voltages. And if we want to keep the bandwidth of our amplifier gain uh, of our amplifier great, we can reduce the gain by adding a emitter resistor here and by this limiting our gain. Okay. R E1 to stabilize our bias. Okay. Always ensure that the LC tank's resonant frequency is within the bandwidth of your amplifier and choose your RF choke to be resonant with your tank to maximize the output of your circuit. For the design, I wanted to pause the video and design Hartley oscillator oscillating at 10 kHz. Use a 100 micro entry and a 10 micro entry for the two inductors. Calculate and select the standard capacitor. Then do op amp design um, having plus minus 10 volt rails. And then a BJT amplifier at 1 milliampere using a 10 volt source. Lastly, simulate the problems and add an RF choke to see the difference between the two implementations. Okay, so I'll be back in a moment with the solution. Okay. The Hartley design solution using op-amp, if inductor 1 is 100 micro entries and inductor 2 is 10 micro entries, the capacitor will be 2.2 microfarads. Okay, so the inductor ratio is 10. This means our gain should be larger than 10, so 12k and 1k should do here. And then the extra capacitors that we include to block DC, 10 microfarads will do. Okay, so that is the op amp implementation. The BJT implementation, inductors remain, the capacitor will work out on the same. And with this, our RC value. We'll work out that it must be larger than 250 ohms. 
Right. So R C and R E should be the same for maximum swing. V C C over three divided by the collector current will give us three point three kilo ohm resistors. Okay, any DC blocking capacitors can be chosen quite large. Can also go with ten microfarads here. Will work out fine. And then the bias is 4 volts at the base, 100 kilo ohms for the two resistors, and you will find that RB2 is 39 kilo ohms and RB1 is 68 kilo ohms. So let's jump over to simulations and test these values. So I ran our Hartley implementation and you'll see that it provides a nice sinusoidal output. Let's check the FFT and nicely at 10 kilohertz. Okay, let's jump over to the BJT implementation. So here is our two BJT implementations, one with a choke, one without the choke. Let's run it. And plus minus four volts output on the RC one and the one with the choke plus minus eight volts. So this is much closer to our resonant frequency um, in this application, we have more output than our rails here. And that is it for the Hartley oscillator. Um, I'll quickly do a 50 to, to check. And that is our Hartley oscillator to line up nicely. Thank you for watching.